Welcome. I want to make a video on how to size a turbocharger for dummies. And I'll preface that by saying none of you are dummies. It's just something that if you're unfamiliar with, uh, you need to start with the basics on. And I'm going to oversimplify this. So there are more factors to this than what I tell you today as a, as a preface. But in general, what I tell you is the basis of what you need to understand to size a turbocharger for your application correctly. So ultimately, in an internal combustion engine, you are limited by how much air you can get into that motor in naturally aspirated conditions. You can only breathe in as much uh, air pressure as what's available in the atmosphere. So we need more air to make more horsepower with burned with the appropriate amount of fuel and a turbocharger is how we get more air into that motor to put more fuel in and make more power, essentially. Now, <clears throat> turbochargers are very similar to internal combustion engines in the way that they are air pumps. So just like an internal combustion engine can have a size and depending on what size it is, it has limitations to how much air it can get in by itself. So do turbochargers. Turbochargers can range from tiny little things that have compressor wheels the size of a quarter to gigantic uh, airship or, or uh, you know ship motors that are the impellers the size of your room. So there's a vast range of these air pumps, but all they're doing is adding more air to an internal combustion engine to make more power. So what, what does that lead us to? Well, they're rated by how much air they can move and they can calculate how much horsepower you can make with an appropriate amount of fuel by how much air you are ingesting into an engine. So uh, we just need to know how much horsepower you want to make. The bottom line is with any turbocharger, Anything that you are trying to understand is I want to know how much horsepower I want in my vehicle. And that's the first thing we need to know to size a turbocharger. Uh, there are many other factors, but if you say I want 500 horsepower, great. We can't get you a horsepower, uh, a turbocharger that makes 400 horsepower. We have to get you one that makes 500 or more. So that's really what, what this boils down to. And the other thing I would like to stress is using primary resources. So when you're selecting a turbocharger, there's many companies out there that sell them. So you can see like AGP Turbo, I have purchased from there before. These people are great uh, to ask questions as a primary resource. So say you have a two liter Honda motor that you wanna make 600 horsepower on. You could call this company ask them or tell them your situation, what motor you have, and they can suggest you a turbocharger. They sell a plethora of turbochargers from all different brands, and they would be able to size a turbocharger and get you the right AR housing, the exhaust turbine housing, uh, that's appropriate for your, your application. So there is a lot of garbage on the internet, and you can avoid that by going to primary resources and just asking the right people. The other thing you can do is educate yourself. So Garrett uh, Motion has a whole section in the racing and performance on how to choose a turbo. And they have this section called Turbo Tech, where you can learn the basics of turbocharging. What, uh, you know, what certain components of turbos do and why they need to be made out of special materials, some of the physics that goes behind it. There is a whole bunch that you can learn about the basics of turbos that will give you an, a better understanding of why you're putting a turbo in your car. Yes, we all just wanna get out there and make power, but there's actually a lot to learn and there's ways to find out good quality information. And that's by going to primary resources like people that sell turbochargers in the racing industry that know what they're doing and by using primary resources like Garrett Motion or Borg Warner, uh, places like this, you can find great information and they have teams dedicated to 
giving you material um, or giving you, yeah, material to learn about how their products work and what kind of materials they use. Like right here, you can see in the Borg Warner EFR series, they use gamma titanium, which is for lightweight and temperature resistance on their turbine wheels, uh, stainless steel turbine housings on the EFR series. All this stuff you can find out uh, pretty easily just by, you know, Googling the turbocharger manufacturer that you're planning to use. Obviously, a lot of us like the Chinese turbos, and you can even go find a place that reputably sells them, like VS Racing, and ask them as well. You could call these guys up and say, I want to make 700 horsepower on a, a turbo 6-liter LS. They will know exactly which turbocharger to set you up with, and they can tell you quite easily. Although there are many opinions out there, these people are trying to sell you something that you won't return. So they're going to get you the right product. So just keep them in mind uh, when you're looking for a turbocharger specifically. Uh, another great thing that Garrett Motion has is this thing called Boost Advisor. You have to log in uh, with an affiliate like a, a Google account, but it will take some basic parameters like crank target horsepower. So you want to make 650 and then your engine displacement. So this starts to get into more of the factors that come that are involved in what you need to size a turbocharger. So this will kind of give you another idea too. But like, like for example, let's just do a 2JZ that we want to make 650 horsepower with. Uh, three liters of displacement, four valves per cylinder. We're going to run it on ethanol, E85, air to air intercooler, and say we're at sea level, and the mid-range RPM is going to be peak torque, so maybe 4,800 sounds reasonable. And then maybe peak RPM for this is 7,800. Uh, let's go with one turbocharger, ambient air, air temperature, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, let's go with uh, our zip code here. This may take just a moment. It has to go through their system, and uh, it will give us suggestions of what turbochargers we should use or could use. And as you can imagine, there's a whole range of different turbochargers. There's not just one that will do it. You can buy a turbocharger that does really well in the high end. And if you're drag racing, it gives you all your power in the, the highest RPM. Or you can get a turbocharger that makes the same amount of power, but it does it as low as possible. So it'd be like a road racing application where it has really good response. Um, if you scroll down here, actually, we'll start up at the top. This will even tell you your mid-range uh, power and what boost pressure and estimated manifold temperatures and things at your mid-range, which would be 4,800, and then your max power at making 650 horsepower. It looks like you'd need 20 pounds of boost if it was at this temperature um, of intake manifold, and it tells you the pounds per minute that that turbo needs to flow. And all this goes into sizing your turbocharger. But you can use a tool like this. This is free at your disposal, and it will give you recommendations. This is what Garrett would set you up with. And uh, you can even look at, for example, you can even look at the compressor map, and it will show you where this turbocharger is going, going to shine for that particular horsepower level on that engine. And this center island right here is the most efficient range that the turbo can operate and you can see right here most of the operational range of this turbocharger is right where your motor and horsepower goals meet so this would be a great option for making 650 horsepower on a three liter uh, twin cam 2jz uh, there's also there's a lot that goes into this but this is just another tool. This is another way for you to kind of learn about this and get educated as you're making your decision on what turbocharger that you want to use. As you can see in here, even though we only want to make 600, uh, 600 horsepower, we could get an 1100 horsepower, flywheel horsepower capable turbo, and it would still make 600 horsepower, but it would just do it uh, in a different in a different way. It would probably only come in at the very top end of, of your engine, but that might be something you want for drag racing. So with this being said, 
my biggest takeaway is you just need to have a goal, know how much horsepower you want to make, know where you want to make that power. If you want it to come on snappy and low, or if you want to just have a high end like drag racing application, all those things are accounted for. But if you know how much horsepower you want to make, you can easily find a turbocharger that will, that will do the job just by doing a couple quick searches and finding some uh, primary resources. Another example, like Borg Warner here, they have a power range where you can look at what their turbos provide. So right here, it will tell you the frame size, the part number, what millimeter the turbocharger is, like this 83 millimeter will make 750 horsepower. Uh, and every turbocharger is different. It's horses for courses. There are many that will that will do the job, but you always need larger than your goal. Uh, usually 10 to 15% larger to make up for uh, drivetrain loss if you're trying to get a wheel horsepower number. Um, but a lot of the time, a turbocharger company like AGP or VS Racing, uh, a bunch of other vendors, they're probably going to try to get you a turbo that has some overhead. So if you only wanted to make 500 horsepower, uh, you know, you could really tell them, Hey, I don't want to make any more. I want to make 500 and that's it. But typically if you said that they would try to get you something that makes 600 gives you a little bit of leeway. So if you want to make more power later, you can, and you won't be dissatisfied. So I hope that you learned something from this. I really appreciate your support and watching this video. If you like what you see, you like learning about this and you want to learn with me, please consider subscribing. It really helps me grow the channel. Uh, I just barely hit uh, my goal of being able to uh, get this channel monetized and get a thousand subscribers. And it really helps me out. I appreciate all you guys do. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions about this and I could try to point you in the right direction. Thanks.